Hello everyone. I am Dr. R. Sri Devi Karumari, Assistant Professor, PG and Research Department of Economics, Sita Lakshmi Ramaswamy College, Trichy. Today, we are going to see an important theory in microeconomics called the Marginal Productivity Theory of Distribution. The theory is very important in microeconomics because it tells how the price of factor is fixed, how the price of various factors of production is fixed in the market. When we talk about the factors of production, we know that they are the land, labor, capital and organization. The essence of this theory is that the, the price of factor of production depends upon its marginal productivity. That is, each factor of production such as land, labor, capital and organization gets its reward according to the contribution it makes to the total output. Theory was first put forward to explain the determination of wages for labor in the market. But later on, prices of other factors of production were also explained with the help of marginal productivity theory. The economist David Ricardo and West were the first to uh, explain the concept of marginal productivity. David Ricardo in his famous theory, the Ricardian theory of rent, calculated the rent based upon the marginal productivity of land. West also applied this theory only to land. Then this theory was further popularized that is rediscovered by various economists like J.B. Clark, Jevons, Wickstead, Walrus and Alfred Marshall and J.R. Hicks. Recently, um, J.R. Hicks has explained the marginal productivity theory of distribution. Before getting a deep insight into the theory, we should know what are the four divisions of economics. As we are studying the theory of distribution, we should understand the concept of distribution in microeconomics. The science of economics is divided into four divisions that is production, exchange, distribution and consumption. Here, distribution is that branch of economics which analyzes how the national income of a country is divided among the various factors of production. That is, an entrepreneur produces a commodity and he earns the profit. Whatever profit he is earning is distributed among the various factors of production as rent, wages, interest, etc. Therefore, production is considered as the uh, prime economic activity in an economy. Then whatever is produced is exchanged, then it is distributed and consumed. In the previous slide, we understood the concept of distribution. The concept of distribution further is classified into four types and they are functional distribution, personal distribution, micro distribution and macro distribution. Functional distribution is the payment made to the factors of production for their functions performed. In the functional distribution, we calculate how the rent of land, wages of labor, interest of capital and profit of entrepreneur are determined. They are determined according to their marginal productivity and the functions performed by each factors of production. Personal distribution refers to the income received by the individuals in a society. We call it as per capita income. The per capita income is calculated by national income divided by population. Micro distribution refers to the price paid to each factor of production. For example, how the price of land is determined, how the price of uh, labor is determined, how the price of capital and entrepreneurship are determined. That is, they are rent, wages, interest and profit respectively. Macro distribution refers to the aggregate price paid to all the factors of production such as total profit, total wages, total interest, etc. The concept of productivity 
plays a very important role in understanding the theory of marginal productivity theory of distribution. Productivity is nothing but it is the measure of efficiency of a person, machine and factory system in converting inputs into an output. The key concepts of productivity are marginal physical product, value of marginal product and marginal revenue product. In the image, if we see the main factors of production are labor and capital, which is used as inputs and it is converted into useful output that is final output through the process of productivity. In this slide, now we will one by one, we will see the concepts of productivity. Marginal physical product is the increase in total product of a firm when additional unit of a factor of production is applied. In other words, we can say that marginal physical product is the addition made to the total product when one more unit of factor is employed, keeping other factors constant. The formula for marginal physical product is MPPN is equal to TPN minus TPN minus 1. TP is the total productivity here. Now in this table, we can understand that the units of factor which is taken here is labor. For example, if the firm employs one unit of labor and by employing one unit of labor, it is able to produce four quintiles of wheat. Now it is employing the second unit of labor by employing or adding the second unit, it is able to produce eight quintiles of wheat. So here four units of productivity is increased by employing one more units of labor. By applying the formula of marginal physical product, we can calculate that MPPN is equal to 8 minus 4. That is by employing the second unit, the firm is able to produce 8 quintiles of wheat and by employing one unit of labor, it is able to produce 4 quintiles of wheat. Therefore, 4 units or 4 quintiles of a uh, wheat has been produced by adding one more unit of labor, which is calculated as the marginal physical product. Now we will see the next concept, which is the value of marginal product. The value of marginal product is the monetary representative of marginal physical product. That is VMP. That is the value of marginal product. That is giving value for the production or the additional production which is produced by the labor that is by employing additional labor. So we can say that it is the fixation of price for the uh, production by the labor. The formula for VMP is MPP into P that is value of marginal product is equal to marginal physical productivity into price. For example, if the market price of wheat is rupees 100 per quintal and the MPP for the additional labor, that is in the previous slide, we saw that by employing one unit of labor, four quintals of wheat is produced and by employing second unit of labor, eight quintals of wheat is produced. Now, the additional uh, productivity which is produced by the additional labor is 4 units. So by multiplying the price of wheat that is rupees 100 per quintal, the value of marginal product is rupees 400 per quintal. So this is how the value of marginal product is fixed in the market. Now the next concept is the marginal revenue product that is the addition made to the total revenue by employing one more unit of factor in production. That is how much the revenue has been increased by employing one more unit of labor. So the formula for this is marginal revenue product is equal to total revenue of n labor minus total revenue of n minus one labor. So here the marginal revenue product is 
400 rupees that is by employing uh, one unit of labor the total revenue is 400 rupees and uh, by employing two units of labor the total revenue is 800 rupees so the addition made to the total revenue is 400 rupees by employing one more unit of labor so this is we call it as marginal revenue product so all these concepts that is the marginal physical product and the value of marginal product and the marginal revenue product is very important for the fixation of uh, wages reward to the various factors of production in the above marginal productivity theory of distribution now we will come to the main theory the marginal productivity theory of distribution which is we are going to discuss now is the clark's version of marginal productivity theory of distribution under perfect market so this theory has been explained in both the markets that is perfect market and imperfect market that is in perfect competition how the wages are determined or the remuneration or the reward is determined for various factors of production and also in the imperfect market how the various reward or remuneration is fixed for the various factors of production but today we are going to discuss only the clark's version of marginal productivity theory of distribution under perfect market or perfect competition so this theory was given by j b clark an american economist who developed the marginal productivity theory of distribution in his number of articles and later on published in his book titled the distribution of wealth this theory is also called as the theory of factor pricing in the words of j b clark under static conditions every factor including the entrepreneur will get a remuneration equal to marginal product that is the reward or price paid to each factor should be equal to marginal product of factor or marginal productivity now we will see the various assumptions of marginal productivity theory of distribution perfect competition exists both in the product market and the factor market every unit of output is homogeneous and easily substitutable and price is homogeneous therefore value of marginal product is equal to marginal revenue product the factors of production that is the inputs are perfectly mobile there exist full employment of resources there is no change in population capital and technology that is there is constant population constant capital and no change in technology every rational entrepreneur will try to maximize his profit with fixed amount of capital theory is explained with the help of a diagram in the above diagram x axis measures the quantity of labor and y axis measures the marginal product the mp curve that is the marginal productivity curve of labor it is downward sloping which indicates that mpl of labor will decline as more and more workers are added to the fixed quantity of capital the prevailing wage rate in the diagram is ow and it will be profitable for the entrepreneurs to go on employing additional workers until the mpl or vmp of labor becomes equal to the prevailing wage rate therefore at ow wage rate ol units of labor are employed since the mpl is equal to ow at ol the entrepreneur would not employ more than ol units of labor because after that point the marginal productivity of labor will start declining therefore the employer will reach the equilibrium position when the wage rate is equal to mpl so in this diagram the portion that is the the triangle portion that is the mwd is the profit earned by the entrepreneur by employing ol units of labor and by fixing the wage rate as ow but after that if he employs the labor it will incur loss to the entrepreneur therefore from this diagram we can understand that the wage rate 
is equal to MPL or value of marginal product. So the firm employs or hires labor up to the number where wage rate is equal to MPL. That is MPL is equal to OW. Now we will see the various criticism or the drawbacks of this theory. The theory of marginal productivity assumes some of the assumptions such as stationary state, perfect competition and perfect mobility of factors which are far away from the actual conditions of the world. The real world is not static because developments are continually taking place making the actual world a dynamic one. Marginal productivity theory ignores the positive interrelationship between rewards of the factors and their productivity that is relationship between wages and efficiency. The marginal productivity theory of distribution does not give any importance to the power structure, social conventions, social status and prestige of group of various people. Now coming to the conclusion. Marginal productivity theory of distribution does not explain fully the determination of all factor prices in the market, but it is considered as the most important economic factor governing the prices of factors in the market, both in the perfect and the imperfect market. Other factors such as power structure, social conventions, status and prestige do play a part in the fixation of wages. economically. The economic factor of marginal productivity does exercise an important influence on the determination of factor rewards. Thank you.